welcome students for this 10th lecture in this lecture we will start the three phase systems the power definitions terms and various components we will extend the concepts and ideas that we have gone through in the single phase systems discussion now you may have questions that why we should go for three phase system why single phase system is not good enough to use it for industry as well as for the residence applications so this discussion will help you to understand why three phase system is better than the single phase system now let us look the various aspects the first is about the wire configuration so if we look the wire configuration of single phase system it can it requires only two wires okay one is the phase and the another is the neutral while the three phase ac circuits consist of three wires for three phase and one wire for the neutral so there are four wires in this case so there are four wires here and there are two wires are here from power transfer point of view the power transfer is less efficient due to the oscillating component while in three phase circuits the power is more efficient the power transfer efficiency is high as compared to single phase system because of the balanced voltage and current nature also in fault conditions the single phase systems completely fails when there are faults or there are emergency situations because there is only single phase if something goes wrong the whole supply stops functioning in case of three phase system if the fault occurs on any of the one of the phases the other two phases will remain functioning so they will supply the power either as a single phase or as a two phase efficiency wise if you look obviously the efficiency of single phase system is quite less as compared to the three phase supply okay in case of three phase system the power supply is p 3p then in case of single phase system the power supply is p so there is the factor of 3 which is quite obvious because we have a three phase so power must be three times of the single phase but you see for to transfer the power p we need two wires but to transfer the power of 3p we need four wires that means there is a material efficiency of 1.5 times basically it means that 3y 2 okay here this is basically p for two wires so this is py2 here it is 3p for four wires okay so for four wires it supplies the so per wire it comes 3y4 it comes 1 by 2 and hence the ratio is 3 by 2 so there is a material efficiency 1.5 times better than the single phase okay and maintenance wise single phase supply requires more maintenance and they are costly also while as three phase supply needs less maintenance and they are more rigid system the applications the uses of the single phase loads okay they constitute basically 10% 
and which mostly is lighting or for heating or for residence applications like refrigerator, air conditioner at home, so and so on. While as for three-phase system, the induction motor itself has a usage of 70 to 75 percent. Okay, and after that, 10 to 15 percent of three phase is used for industrial heating, furnace heating, and cooling. The difference of three phase and single phase is in form of the economics, the more power transfer for the same material, and more efficient, more ragged, more reliable. So these are the points which support the three-phase AC circuit or three-phase supply in the power system. And that is one reason why three-phase power system is almost universal throughout the world. Also very interesting thing is that the single phase can be derived from three-phase. Okay? You can form single phase from three-phase, but you cannot form three-phase from a single phase. Okay, then again you have to go for multi-phase system. So single phase is a subset of three phase. Now this system is shown here, three phase supply system or three phase circuit where we have a three phase voltages as you can see here, BA, BB and BC. And there is a feeder line or there is a transmission line you can say which may have some inductance and resistance which I have not shown it here but if you want you can add it so that it is a more practical line so it may have some inductance or resistance and it is supplying the load here this is the load bus this particular system is balanced because the Z is same for all three phases the input is same same for all three phases. This means ZA equal to ZB equal to ZC equal to Z. So therefore, for a balanced load, there will be balanced current. Now, what is the definition of the balanced three-phase system? In this uh, equation, we have shown how to represent a three-phase balanced system. So this is three-phase balanced system. Okay. So we have three voltage equations BA, BB and BC. So BA is equal to root 2 times B sin omega t and similarly BB root B sin omega t minus 120 degree. Please note. And BC is root 2B sin omega t plus 120 degree. Alright. And similarly there are three phase currents which are also balanced and they are expressed as root to i, i a is root to i here, sin omega t minus phi and i b t is root to i sin omega t minus 120 minus phi, i c is root to i sin omega t plus 120 minus phi. They have been uh, plotted in this diagram as you can see. So this is phase A here, okay. This is phase A. This is phase B. This line, and this is phase C waveform. Similarly, there are currents. This is A phase current. This is B phase current, and this is C phase current. The current in each phase lacks the respective voltage by phi degree. So this is angle of phi. This ang angle of phi which the each current lacks the respective voltage. Okay, this is the angle phi. And you can also see the same phenomena here that this is the angle phi is represented here. Okay, this is also here and here as well. the definition of the balance voltage and current is that the magnitude should be same. So you can see 
B, B and B and phase angle should be displaced by symmetrically by plus minus 120 degree. So minus plus or plus minus 120 degree. So basically B phase lacks A phase by 120 degree and C phase lacks A phase by another 120 degree that is 240 degree or it leads the A phase by 120 degree. This is same as minus 240 degree. Okay. Similarly, the current also has each phase current has same magnitude. You can see this is I, this is I, this is I and the displacement of phase with respect to phase A is minus 120 and plus 120. So these set of voltage and currents are balanced. Now, if any of the conditions, either voltage magnitude or phase angle, okay, is not met in that case, the voltages and currents are called to be unbalanced. For example, if B is different, if this is B A and this is B B, okay, then they are unbalanced three phase system for B A is not equal to B B. Similarly, even if the B is same, even the magnitude is same, but the angle is not minus plus 120 degree, rather it can be minus, one is minus 100 degree, another is plus 100 degree, so they are not symmetrically phase shift of 120 degree, therefore they are also unbalanced. So any of the condition, if not met, they are called as unbalanced three phase voltage and current. Now once you we know this, then we can go ahead. These three phase voltages can also be expressed as phasors. Okay. So earlier we have a time domain notations and these are phasor notations. In phasor notations, we express the, the voltages as a magnitude RMS value and angle of it. Similarly, BB minus 120 degree. BC is B 120 degree and current I angle of minus phi, I angle of minus 120 minus phi and I angle of 120 minus phi. They are also shown here if you look the phasor diagram, this is called phasor diagram, I think all of you are aware of this. This shows the relative phasors with respect to the reference phasor. So this is the reference phasor here. Okay, so I A lacks the B A voltage by 5 degree, similarly I B lacks B B by 5 degree and similarly I C lacks B C by 5 degree and they are equivalent magnitude. So B A equal to B B equal to B C and I A equal to I B equal to I C. Okay. Now once we know these three phase balance system, how they are expressed and what they represent in timing diagram and the phasor diagram, we will go ahead to understand what are its different power components and what are different definitions of power for three phase systems and how the power factor is being derived from these definitions. And what is the quality of power in three phase system in presence of unbalance and harmonics? So these are the questions that we raise also in single phase systems. So we will go ahead with this representation and as we know that to answer these questions we have to start from the simple expression called instantaneous power. We know the name. I have used the word instantaneous power. Okay. It is not active or reactive power, it is simply power and this is three phase because it belongs to three phase. So this three phase power we can write like this P three phase and function of time. 
So obviously, this three-phase power must be consisting of the power of three phases. So that three phases are P A phase plus B phase plus C phase. Okay, A phase and B phase and C phase. Now, what is P A? P A must be equal to B A into I A. And this must be equal to B B into I B. This must be equal to B C into I C. Okay. And as you know that B A I A is like a single phase. This is another phase. And this is another phase. And this multiplication will be simplified as we have done for single phase systems. For example, if you see P A, which is B A into I A, okay, then this is equal to root two B sine omega t into root two I sine. Omega t minus phi. Am I correct? This we have done earlier. And if we multiply this, then we will get similar expression that we have found earlier. That it is nothing but b i cos phi. We can classify into active injective power component. One minus cos two omega t. Minus b i sine phi sine two omega t. Similarly, we can find p b equal to b b into i b equal to root two b sine Omega t minus 120 degree because this is B phase voltage into root to I sine omega t minus 120 degree minus phi and we multiply this we will get similar expression okay except that omega t will be replaced by omega t minus 120 degree because you can see it here the only difference between these two expressions is that omega t has become omega t minus 120 so therefore in the final expression we can substitute Omega t for omega t minus 120 degree, and then it becomes simply b i cos phi 1 minus cos 2 omega t minus 120 degree. Close this bracket and make it a curly bracket here, and then minus b i. Sine phi sine two omega t minus one twenty degree. Okay. Of course, this can be further simplified because this becomes cos. Two omega t minus two forty. Okay, and minus two forty is same as plus one twenty degree. So this becomes cos two omega t plus one twenty degree. So finally, it becomes like this: equal to 
बी आई कॉस फाइव इंटू कॉस ओमेगा टी प्लस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री माइनस बी आई साइन फाइव साइन टू ओमेगा टी प्लस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री ओके दिस इज डिग्री मेक इट मोर क्लियर ओके एंड सिमिलरली वी कैन राइट द एक्सप्रेंस फॉर थर्ड फेज दैट इज द पी सी सो दिस इज पी सी टी इक्वल टू बी सी इन टू आई सी विच इज रूट टू बी साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री इन टू रूट टू आई साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री माइनस फाइव सो मल्टीप्लाइंग दिस विल गिव अस सिमिलर एक्सप्रेशन बी आई कॉस फाइव वन माइनस कॉस टू ओमेगा टी प्लस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री हेयर क्लोज ब्रैकेट माइनस बी आई साइन फाइव साइन टू ओमेगा टी माइनस प्लस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री है एंड सिंप्ली फाइंग दिस फर्दर सिमिलर टू प्रीवियस बिकम बी आई कॉस फाइव वन माइनस कॉस टू ओमेगा टी माइनस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री क्लोज द ब्रैकेट माइनस बी आई साइन फाइव साइन टू ओमेगा टी माइनस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री नाउ इफ बी Add all these components. Okay, if we add all these components, then what do we get? We'll get p three phase as a function of time must be equal to p a plus p b plus p c, and it must be equal to. All those three terms. So first, let us say the phase A. The next R by B, second phase B. I will take this. And third phase is below. These three phases powers are being added. so what do we get you can see here uh, sorry this is 1 minus i have left the term 1 minus please add this my mistake is left out so i will add it here this is actually 1 minus cos 2 omega t plus 120 degree okay so this have to be added okay so after adding we will get bi cos phi is common in all three terms in bracket 1 1 1 so this become 3 here this is 3 minus then cos Two omega t plus cos two omega t plus one twenty degree and plus cos two omega t minus 
plus 120 degree minus 120 degree because this is from the third third one so this is minus 120 degree it is this one and close this bracket close the whole bracket so these terms form the coefficient of bi cos phi and next is minus bi sin phi sin 2 omega t here plus sin 2 omega t this is first one is 120 degree so plus 120 degree and plus sin 2 omega t minus 120 degree close this bracket all right fine till now now you see that this omega t can be treated as theta 2 omega t so it's like basically theta cos theta plus cos theta plus 120 degree plus cos theta minus 120 degree if you add them this becomes cos theta cos 120 is minus half and minus sin theta sin 120 the next one is cos theta again cos theta minus half and then plus sin theta sin 120 sin will go with sin and minus half minus half will go with cos this cos so the whole term is equal to zero and similarly we can simplify this that this summation of sin theta plus sin theta omega t plus 120 degree and sin 2 omega t minus 120 degree is equal to 0. It is like adding 3 balance phases. The sum of 3 balance phases is always equal to 0. So, this is 0, this is 0. Finally, this is left out at 3 b i cos phi this is p 3 phase ok very interesting that this instantaneous 3 phase power which we have calculated by multiplying the respective voltage and currents for the phases we found that the multiplication and finally summation of this a, B, and C phase powers is equal to a constant, which is you can say P capital P three phase. Or if you say per phase, then it is three into P, or simply three P. Okay. So although the voltage and currents, the voltage and currents are function of time but the power the instantaneous power is constant it's like a dc circuit in dc circuit the power is pdc is bdc into idc and it is constant because bdc is constant and idc is also constant so therefore this power is constant and we get similar result for this three phase system roughly That means this three phase system we have like a, a DC circuit where the power is not function of time in the sense that it won't involve the oscillating component of voltage and currents. 
if you compare with the single phase system then you remember the power was average value plus time bearing value for example if you recall it for single phase system bi cos phi 1 minus cos 2 omega t then minus bi sin phi sin 2 omega t such that the average value of single phase power is p bar or simply bi cos phi so i can say the p single phase which is average value of p single phase over time 0 to t 1 by t equal to p it basically means that there is a oscillating component always but here there is no oscillating component okay for three phase system p three phase if i say equal to some average component plus some oscillating component so in that case this component is equal to zero and this is simply equal to p three phase bar which is three p so the point is this that's why that this three phase induction motor is very efficient because it does not have any oscillating component of power in the final output but this is the advantage of the balanced three phase system if there is a unbalance we will not get this advantage that power is constant the three phase power therefore is a constant power and there is no other component over that which is also three phase average or real power so three phase instantaneous power is equal to three phase real power as if the oscillating component don't exist why this is happening this is because of the effect of the balanced three phase system because of the balanced nature these terms the oscillating term being contributed by these terms okay being contributed by different phases becomes equal to zero so hence they do not contribute to the real power but about reactive power in this case q three phase q three phase is sum of the peak of p reactive component now what is p reactive component here the p reactive component is the bi sin phi so this is bi sin phi so each has a bi sin phi phase a phase b phase c if you look at here so this is bi sin phi this is bi sin phi this is bi sin phi okay so 3 bi sin phi and this term is p reactive this is p active clear this is p active and this is p reactive so the peak value of p reactive is the reactive power of q capital q and therefore this is sum of the q a plus q b plus q c which are same as b i sin phi so become 3 b i sin phi okay so finally the p3 phase is 3 b i cos phi and q3 phase is 3 b i sin phi okay now till now it's okay there is not an issue but there is attempt to define the instantaneous reactive power similar to instantaneous active power 
so in 1983 or around 84 h agagi and his colleagues publish one paper and they give the name of uh, this work as pq theory basically it means reactive power theory so pq theory or simply pq theory the reference i have given at the end of my uh, uh, chapter in the book that i have uploaded in the moodle so you can go in chapter 2 and see at the back of the chapter you will find this reference okay so please go through it if you have time to read it will be interesting to read this paper so this pq theory says that it is possible to define the term call instant instantaneous reactive power and based on this power a theory is developed to compensate the loads containing the harmonics and balance in the system okay so for this we need to define some terms before we go for this term similar to pt we need to define some important parameters okay so this is achieved through alpha beta transformation abc coordinates are being transformed to alpha beta components you might have heard this alpha beta transformation where we also call it 3 axis to 2 axis transformation or 3 phase to 2 phase transformation in machine you might have studied this transformation this is also known as clark transformation okay the whole idea is that the coupling between a v c is eliminated through alpha beta transformation because alpha beta axes are mutually perpendicular so i will take the diagram for which this transformation can be obtained okay so i will go to that particular diagram or i can write here right now so let us take this line and call it a phase okay this is a phase then we have a b phase so this is the b phase here and then we have a c phase okay so let us say this is a or you can say b a along this b a phasor this is b b and this is b c and then we form the alpha and beta components so if this is the alpha let us say beta component here and this is alpha along this so we can write this is also alpha axis so b alpha along this you can say and this is beta axis so i'll put it here 
that are saying V A will say A axis and alpha axis are along the same way. So, this is A axis or alpha axis aligned to same direction. This is beta axis, then this is minus J beta axis. It depends upon the uh, the way you take it, so it's not very important, but just try to understand the concept here. Okay, so this is actually minus J beta axis. This is J beta axis. If you take plus J beta up, then down will be minus J beta axis. Okay. Now let us say at any point of time there exist values B A, B B and B C. These values are therefore taken at this point. Let us say this point is A. So suppose this is B A. Okay. So this is B A here. This is B B along the B axis I have taken. So this is point B B and this is B C. Anywhere you can take. Initially we did not assume whether they are balanced or unbalanced. So we can take any value B C. And then after that B will resolve these B A, B B, B C component along the alpha beta axis. Okay. So this B A, this is B B, this is B C can be resolved along the horizontal here this is horizontal projection of B C, this is horizontal projection of B B, this is vertical projection of B C and this is vertical projection of B B. This angle is 30 degree, this is 60 degree. Okay. So, with this notation we can write what is V alpha, what is B beta. So, obviously V alpha will be the components of V A, B B, B C along the alpha axis. Obviously B A along alpha is completely false on the alpha axis. So, this will be B A plus the component of B B along the beta axis is B B cos 30. So, root 3 by 2 B B sorry along the horizontal axis so it will be B B cos 60 it will be this. Okay. I have taken different point you can make it more accurate I think it will be better so I will take the correct point it will be like this so this projection is here and this is the projection of B B. So B B cos 60 but it is in the opposite direction therefore negative sign. So we will keep negative sign here and make it B B B B by 2 because cos 60 is half. Similarly B C is also along the opposite direction. So this will be minus B C by 2. And then V beta will be the components of A V C along the beta axis. So the component of B A along beta axis is 0 because it has no projection along the beta axis. So this is 0 and the projection of B B along beta axis is 30 degree. So cos 30 of B B. Okay. So, B B into cos 30 is nothing but root 3 by 2. Since we have taken this as a positive direction, so this is plus J, I mean J will not come here because J is already understood. So, the component will be actually root 3 by 2 
bb and then the component of bc along with axis so this is opposite side minus so minus root 3 by 2 bc all right and we also form sometimes the third component called b0 alpha beta 0 for the symmetry of the transformation matrix put like this b a plus b b plus b c by root 3 okay so these are the transformed values of alpha beta 0 coordinates the transformation is not complete it is just basic idea okay and normally in transformation the matrix the energy or the power has to be constant when we transform the one set of parameters to another plane the energy should not change the power should not change so therefore the power invariant transformation we have to find out what is the factor k so i will close it here for some vector of k here this power must be constant with the abc system since b0 is unaffected by this transformation therefore if k comes here for the sake of the uniformity then k will also come here okay so now once we have defined the terms b0 b alpha b beta we will see that how the rem energy remains constant in both the frame of reference for certain value of k so that we will discuss in the next class